I have quite a few micro cassette recorders, but I've never had one like this. This is from Olympus, and this is a Pearl Quarter SD from 1977. And you could get it with an FM radio tuner and a voice actuator system. So this is totally different than the other micro cassette recorders I've had. Let's take a look at it. Before we look at it physically, a few of the items, it's um, 2.4 centimeters per second, which is like 15 sixteenths inches per second. Whereas a standard compact cassette, they played it like one and seven eighths inches per second. And this cost $240 in 1977, which is like $1,100 in 2021 money. The FM tuner cost $45 in 1977 money, um, which is 200 and some dollars today. So the system would have cost $1,300 without the voice actuator and I don't know what that costs so that's even more so you know you could be looking at a $1,500 system here in 1977 dollars there was also an SD2 which had two speeds the 2.4 centimeters per second and a slower speed 1.2 centimeters per second pretty much the same other than that and I've heard that there was an SD3 that included a counter, a clock, a timer, and a stopwatch, but I've never seen one of those. All right, taking a tour around the machine. At the top, we have our microphones, a lock switch, review, rewind, fast forward and cue, volume control here, a pause button, microphone and earphone jacks, but those are uh, not your standard modern jacks. Those are an earlier, I think, 16th inch plug. So I don't have anything that'll fit those right now. We have our cassette well. Whoops. It ejects pretty well, doesn't it? It goes from right to left. Um, automatic shut off. This is automatic level control for recording, so there's no way to set that. Um, let's see. Our eject button. We've got a wrist strap holder. Let's see. Stop, play, record. Pretty common things. So, let, like I say, the amazing thing is the FM radio and the voice actuator. Let's try recording something. All right, testing the recording of the Olympus Pearl Quarter SD from 1977 on voice. The slow speed, it's not gonna be any good for music, but maybe we'll get something. And I'm not sure how close I have to be to the uh, microphones here. I haven't really worked that out too much, but let's rewind it and see if I got anything. I'm testing the recording of the Olympus Pro Quarter SD from 1977 on voice. Slow speed, it's not going to be any good for music, but maybe we'll get something. And I'm not sure how close I have to be to the uh, microphones here. I haven't really worked that out too much. But let's rewind it and see if I got anything. Okay. There's a little something there anyway. Let's put the voice control actuator on it. Notice there's a number of contacts there at the bottom. See, put that in pause. We got three settings here, low sensitivity, mid, middle range, and high sensitivity. 
I think I'll try high. I don't know if that will work or not. Let's see, we put it in pause. Press record and play. All right. Well, it is recording something, but um, it seems to start recording right away. And it is on high. Let's see if I stop talking, if it will stop. Yeah, it stopped. Okay. Then it started again. I think we're going to run into some of my earlier recording here. Porter SD from 1977 on voice. The slow speed is not going to be any good for music. But maybe we'll get something. And I'm not sure how close I have to be. <laughs> Maybe we'll get something, and I'm not sure how close I have to be to the uh, microphones here. I haven't really. I was just trying to fast forward and cue there. Uh, let's rewind it and see if I got anything. All right. Well, it is recording something, but um, it seemed to start recording right away, and it is on high. Let's see if I stop talking, if it will stop. There seems to be some. Okay. There seems to be some background motor noise there. Um, actual, as far as voice recording, doesn't seem to be a lot of wow and flutter, but it's still not very good quality. Well, let's try the FM gadget. All right. Let's see if we can record anything off the radio here. Um, we're in pause. Press play. Turn the radio on. Let's see. Press record. Okay, well it works. Uh, there's some bleed through there. I there's some other older music on this thing. So maybe the erase head's not working too well. I'm not sure. But uh, it definitely records off the radio. I guess that would be a way to do it back in the day. Interesting. And the little voice actuator works. It's a nice leather case, and this seems to be real leather too. Uh, all of the controls are accessible. Pinch down there. Why won't you pinch? There we go. Speakers available. Recording line. All of your things at the top are available. Your recording light or your, your switch here. Um, check button, a belt loop. Japan. Obviously for some sort of power adapter, which I don't have. But Olympus Optical, probably in reference to their cameras, I would suppose, from that era. But it is a very nice case. My SD2 with a two-speed, it doesn't work very well. It, it uh, makes a very high whine. And that's about it. So that's a shame. Be interested to compare the uh, tone qualities if I could ever get it working. And the SD looks like this on the inside. We can't see all the workings because it's uh, flipped over. But that's what that is. Now, there might be an internal AM antenna in here that when you had the AM tuner that I think was available, 
you didn't need to have an extended tuner. So there might be an AM, and AM tuner in this uh, works there. And uh, this is a other one that I have that did not work well. So I took some of it apart to try and make it work, but I couldn't. But that's the inside of the uh, unit there. But I've enjoyed them, and I really think this is a pretty interesting system. It doesn't sound too bad for what it is for 1977. Kind of doesn't want to stand up straight, does it? Well, anyway, that's the Pearl Quarter SD from Olympus in 1977 micro cassette recorder with music, FM tuner DRA2, and voice actuator DVA1. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Bye.